It's another edition of the wrap-up show with John Schaefer and Jim Russell presented by Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. Before we get going, remember to subscribe to these videos for exclusive year-round Padres content. Look at Jim right now. He's pointing at the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, like these videos with the thumbs up, follow us on social media at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. Before we get to today's topic, would Mike Sosha, the former Angels manager, be a good fit? Let's tell you about Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance if you're shopping for auto home renters or life insurance and you're here in San Diego, there's only one guy to turn to, and that's a San Diegan, Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. He's got over a decade of experience helping people like us find the perfect insurance products. And what separates Mark from the competition, it's his customer service and his communication. Click the link down below in the description. You'll get to Mark's website. Let him help you and your family with your insurance needs. And if you are wondering how you can get a hold of him, all his information is above my head right here. His number and his email address mnimitz at farmersagent.com. That's mnimitz at farmersagent.com. Mike Sosha, would he be a good fit? The longtime Angels manager, former champion as a manager back in 2002, the last decade with Anaheim, not as good as his first decade, but nearly a two-decade long run. He's been retired for the last couple of seasons. Would he fit with A.J. Preller's philosophy? Is he a modern manager that would lean on a front office for analytics? So let's just start with the basic question, Jim. Would Mike Sosha be a good fit for the Padres franchise right now? Yeah, I don't know. I don't <laughs> I don't really have a good read on this one. Um, I don't have like a strong like he would not be good or he would be great. Yep. I feel like it's kind of in the middle and it doesn't really excite me, to be honest with you. It doesn't um it doesn't make me happy. It doesn't make me um encouraged. If that if those are the right words, like Mike Sosha might be a good manager, okay, uh, but when's the last time he managed? Like four years ago. When's the last time he made the postseason? Like seven or eight years ago. And I know well, Ron Washington didn't make the post. I, I understand that. Um, it just feels like the World Series that Mike Sosha won in two thousand two has carried throughout the last two decades as that he's a good manager. Well, that was in two thousand and two. That was well, that was almost 20 years ago. It's, things have definitely changed in baseball. So if the World Series he won in 2002 is going to just carry the his way um, and carry, you know, to him being a manager again, like, okay, but I think there's better options out there. And if AJ's looking for a guy um, who can demand respect, yeah, he'll demand respect. I mean, he, you can walk in that clubhouse and say, I won a World Series. But a lot of those players will look at him like, dude, I don't remember you ever doing that. And that was in 2002. And you got fired by the Angels and you had Mike Trout on your team. And it kind of was a disaster at the end. Yeah, I will say this to your point. I, I think it kind of fills, it checks the box of a veteran manager that's had success. Um, and you look at the managers in the World Series, Dusty Baker, Brian Snitker. You know, Dusty Baker's mm -hmm. in his 70s. Brian Snitter's in his 60s. Mike Sosha's 62. He'd be younger than both of those managers. I'm with you. 2002 is forever ago in modern baseball. Uh, one of the knocks on Mike Sosha was his unwillingness or maybe lack of desire to uh, use analytics in his you know, uh, latter seasons as the Angels manager. And to your point, he hasn't managed in the postseason since 2014. You look at his last decade in Anaheim, there's one 90-win season. They had that awesome 2014, if you remember. They were swept out of the postseason. They were amazing that year. They won 98 games. Now, they had a very good run in the mid-2000s and early 2000s. But baseball's changed a lot. To your point, he's been out of managing for the last four seasons. Um, you know, I, again, I think it among the options out there, if you're talking about a Ron Washington, if you're talking about a Mike Schilt, if you're talking about a Mike Sosha, I feel as if Sosha would probably be at the bottom end of that. Because Washington, we've talked about his personality, his likability, the fact that he's won at the big league level as recently as Mike Sosha. And then Mike Schilt has been in the postseason each of the last three years. So it was more you know, adept to be a modern manager. He's a younger manager as well. He's in his 50s as opposed to his 60s. So again, I think it would be a reasonable and fair hire. Do I think it's a sexy hire or anything that would really energize the Padres fan base? I really don't think it would be. Remember, Mike Sosha is known as a player first time as the Dodgers, right? I mean, he spent a long time as a player for the Dodgers, then spent a long time as a manager for the Angels. Like, there's not that strong attachment to San Diego. I kind of like the fact that the, the roster is a win-now roster, and he's won before with win-now rosters previously. 
Um, but, you know, it wouldn't be my first choice. It certainly wouldn't be my last choice either. But I feel like the Padres are in a spot where they need to win right now. And I hope they can get as close to their first choice as possible. And I just don't know if he would be my first guy. Yeah, I'm with you there. I don't I don't know if he would be my first guy. It's kind of one of those, like, like you said, not sexy hires. It might work, but I don't know. I, I just I feel that that they could do better. <laughs> like they, they could do better than Mike Sosha. And the reports this past weekend from Dennis Lynn that they're not even really considering Bochi, or at least they haven't tried for Bochi, that is a red flag for me. If you're going to go after Mike Sosha and you're not going to go after Bruce Bochi, like wh what are you doing here? I I'm sorry, but Mike Sosha is not the same as Bruce Bochi at all. Uh, Mike Sosha had his moment 20 years ago, but Bruce Bochi, if he's there, you go after him. And I don't understand why this organization won't go after guys that are right there in front of them, like Ron Washington and Bruce Bochi. And it seems like they're reluctant to do that. And I don't know why. I don't understand why they're not doing it. It's right in front of their face. They have it right there. They just need to make a little effort and, and go get the job done. Instead, it's like, well, we need an experienced manager, but we don't want Bochi and Ron. So who's the next guy? Oh, it's Mike Sosha. Like, guys, what are, what are we doing here? Well, and then here's the other question. On the other side of the equation is, does Mike Sosha want the job because does he want to work with A.J. Preller? Because we've heard this a little bit now with some yeah. of these veteran guys that are going to want to bring in their full staffs that are going to want to have full control of their clubhouse, maybe full control of lineup construction or a majority of that control, in-game decision-making, which I think we've learned that Jace Tingler had a lot of and his staff. Is he going to want to work with A.J. Preller? We've heard that Bruce Bochy wouldn't necessarily, or that's at least the... Um, that, that's what we've, that's what we've been led to believe. I think Kevin Acey actually said that this weekend. Uh, he wrote this, many people in the league have expressed skepticism. Sosha or Bochi would take the job under Preller. The Padres have had only preliminary contact with Bochi. As you mentioned, he retired a year after Sosha. So there are those that ex um, have expressed skepticism that either would have interest in the job. So it's one thing to say, well, Mike Sosha wouldn't be our first choice. It's a whole nother thing to say, does Mike Sosha have an interest in working for A.J. Preller in this regime right now? Uh, maybe he does. Maybe because he's he's coached uh, Team USA, he wants to get back into it. And maybe Preller's looking at that as like the re most recent coaching job that he did. You know, took in, taking the team and Team USA won the silver medal, I believe. Yeah, so, right. uh, yeah, I mean... <sighs> I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it's just, you see those things and it's like, you're going to get a guy who only will work with you. And I understand that, that logic there. Like you don't want to get some guy that doesn't want to work with you and it's going to be a problem and, and all that stuff. I understand that, but you gotta, you gotta have some like leeway here, AJ, you gotta, you gotta meet a guy halfway, you know, you can't just have it be, well, he's not going to work with me. So I'm going to go the next guy in line, which is a veteran manager in Mike Sosha. Like if, if Bochi's there, you meet him halfway, man. You got to meet him halfway. And and if there's a problem there, if you already have talked to him or heard from him or think in your mind it's not going to work with Bochi because he can't work with you, that's that, that's not how it should be. It should be you have to work with Boch, right? You have to work with him. You have to meet him halfway. And and on the flip side, Boach has to meet him halfway too. It can't be just, you know, Bochi comes in and runs the entire show, but you can't also bring in a guy like Bochi and expect him to just do everything you say. And well, well I don't maybe know. they've moved on from Bochi and even a or maybe. some of these veteran guys. The reason I say that, Jim, is because do you hire a pitching coach, or we believe they've hired a pitching coach or plan to hire a pitching coach from Cleveland, their assistant pitching coach, Ruben Niebla, if you're going to hire Bruce Bochi? I mean, Bruce Bochi you would think would have full control over his staff. Now, from A.J. Preller's perspective, I'll be honest, I kind of understand it. If Ruben Niebla is that much of a talent and you have to have him and he's a difference maker for your staff and he's gotten high reviews for maybe guys even internally like a Mike Clevenger and others, if he's this pitching whisperer and you have to have him and you feel he's going to mold and mesh well with whomever is on your staff, I understand it. Is that going to be a non-qualifier for a potential managerial candidate? Maybe, but maybe A.J. Preller was willing 
to go that route, knowing that he couldn't get a coach of the caliber of Ruben Niebla from Cleveland um, regardless. So I understand making that higher, but I wonder if that's now ruling out some of these veteran candidates that we've talked about that you would think would want to control the entirety of their staff. Yeah, that that hire, while it might be a good one from Cleveland, um, it kind of just, again, goes against everything that has been said publicly and privately, too. Dennis Lynn has said that publicly and privately, A.J. Preller has expressed that the new manager of the team will have a major role in hiring his staff. And, well, you just hired a pitching coach, it seems like. It's not official yet, but by all the indications and all reports, like it's going to happen. You hired a pitching coach and you don't have a manager yet. And yes, this guy might be a pitching coach whisperer, but what if in the off chance, the new manager does not get along with this guy. Then you, then again, you made another mistake because you're going to be dealing with friction in that clubhouse between coach, the coaching staff. And that's exactly what happened with Jace Tingler and Larry Rothschild. You know, you brought in Larry, Kind of not before you hired Jace. I think it was after, but still, mm -hmm. you brought in Larry, worked out the first year, but that was only 60 games. And then it blew up in your face the next year. And I'm sure they worked well together for a certain point of time. Um, but th there was problems there. And you you hired a guy that, yes, Jace Tingle, I guess, signed off on, but still it didn't work out. And the it's not it's not because um the guy the guy's not good or doesn't know what he's doing. It's because they didn't get along. And, and this guy from Cleveland, yes, he might be the greatest pitching coach ever. And I, I'm on board with the hire. I like the hire. I think he's going to be really good for this pitching staff. Um, I like the direction. I like his vision. I like everything about him. I've you know seen what he's done in, in Cleveland. Look at look at up the pitchers that he's helped. Look at what the pitcher said about him. That's great. I'm all for it. But to not have the manager be a part of the process... I don't get that, man. Or could there be something we don't know, Jim, and they're further along in the managerial hiring process than we know, and that they've gotten a sign-off from a potential candidate that they're very far along in the process with or potentially have even hired but won't make that announcement for another seven or ten days because of the World Series. So I, I guess that's a right. possibility as well. I, I was surprised. I'm with you. I think it's a good hire. I was surprised. The question is, would Mike Sosha be a good hire? Put your answer in the description down below, would Mike Sosha be a good fit as Padres manager? Reminder, subscribe to the wrap-up show right here on YouTube. Hit that notification button down below. Like our videos as well. Follow us on Twitter at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. Until next time, this has been the wrap-up show presented by Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance.